What is communication breakdown? What are the barriers to communication? These are the things that we'll be talking about today. You have learned from your previous module that the main goal of communication is understanding. We communicate because we would want to understand the people around us as much as we would want to be understood. But at times, even after taking care of every detail, some misunderstanding still arise in any part of the communication process. And in many communication situations, the message may not be received exactly the way the sender intended. And it is where communication breakdown comes in. Communication breakdown happens every time a communicator miscommunicates what he or she is trying to say and that the hearer or the receiver misinterprets and misunderstands what has been communicated. Now, this could be due to the different barriers to communication. The first barrier, you have the physical barriers. These are the natural and the environmental conditions that create communication gap between the sender and the receiver. These are the disturbances that are external to both speaker and listener which hamper the physical transmission of signal or of the message. An exam examples of the physical barriers are people talking too loud, uh, too loud sound of the karaoke, or even the loud party of the neighbors while you were trying to record something, even the irritating hum of your air conditioner or of your electric fan and the distance between the speaker and the, s the listener. So all these necessary noise or sound or anything that blocks you from listening to and understanding the message are all physical barriers. The second one, we have psychological barriers. These are the mental barriers which could either be social or personal issues that block you from communicating with others. This is very much connected with the negative self-image that we project to the people around us. Example of these psychological barriers are your negative self-esteem, your lack of confidence, the poor social skills that you have, your negative thoughts about how people would view you, the trauma, depression, fear, problems. All these are the psychological barriers that would hinder you from understanding or from communicating with other people. The next one is the cultural barriers. These barriers are encountered by people uh, regarding their uh, values, their beliefs, and their traditions which are in conflict with others. So, you know, people's culture affect the way they communicate and relate to others. What is acceptable in this particular culture might be a taboo in this particular culture. That is why when you are communicating, you have to take into account cultural practices and cultural backgrounds of your audience or of the receivers and that there is a need for you to be culturally appropriate. What are the examples of these cultural barriers? You have your different beliefs, the traditions and the customs that are not in uh, um, that are not in consonance with other people. You also have the manner of dressing, the values, the dialects, the language that you're using, even your approach to life, your way of living, or even your way of thinking, the body language and the gestures which are, which actually have different meaning when it comes to other cultures. All these cultural backgrounds and cultural practices really would contribute to communication breakdown. The last one, we also have this called linguistic barriers. These linguistic barriers are the, the most common communication barriers which cause misunderstandings and misinterpretations between and among people. So communications really becomes difficult in situations where people do not understand each other's language. So how could you understand the meaning being conveyed by this particular person if you do not have any idea about what he or she is talking about and you do not have any idea about the language that he or she is using? If the communicator and the receiver do not use the same language, then there is no message being conveyed. 
However, even when communicating in the same language, the terminology used in a message may act as a barrier as well. An example of this would be you are using the same language, English, but you are coming up with different terminologies or different technical terms because you are from different professions, then that could be a barrier to communication. And other examples of linguistic barriers would be the use of, like what I said, the technical jargons, the slang, uh, the differences in the language, or even the accent or the dialect, uh, if, there could be, if there are speech defects or language impairments or even the grammar. These are all barriers to communication. But similarly, vertiver presents various barriers to communication but classifies this into three, into three kinds of noise. The internal noise, the external noise, and that of the semantic noise. External noise is similar to that of the physical barrier but in the external noise it's the sight the sound or everything that draw people's attention away from the intended meaning example of this will be the noise from the vehicles around you even the visual aids used by the teachers during um, during discussion the bark of the dog these could be barriers to communication the second one is the internal noise which is kind of similar to that of the psychological barriers that we previously discussed. These are the internal hindrances that or the internal destructions that hinder um, meaning. The thoughts, the emotions, the feelings that interfere with the meaning. So in fact, the person, a person is emotionally mature and can handle his or her emotions or feelings very well, may could become a very good communicator. On the other hand, a person who let his emotion overpower um, everything, then he will be facing certain difficulties. True enough that, you know, even in the classroom, if you are not uh, concentrating, if you are not focused on um, a certain task, if you are thinking other things or you are bombarded with so many problems, that would not allow you to uh, understand exactly what is being communicated by the teacher. Another example of internal noise is a fear of speaking in front of the class. When you're also afraid of being criti criticized or if you are bothered by some problems, so those are considered internal noise. The next one you have semantic noise. These are um, the noise, uh, this is the noise that uh, is connected with um, the speaker, when the speaker and the listener have different meaning systems, meaning the words that I'll be using might have another meaning in the minds of the person I am talking to. So this semantic noise does not have any sound, but rather ambiguity in words, in sentences, or in other symbols used in communication. So um, examples of this semantic noise, I are incorrect grammar, you have abstract ideas which are open for misinterpretations, misinter the use of technical jargons at the same time, or even the use of the figurative language because figurative language could be, could be interpreted in various ways and your interpretation might be different from the interpretation that the speaker would want to tell you. Right? So that, like what we have said, interpretations are very relative. So if there is um, misunderstanding because of the words, um, because of the meanings of the words that you, are, that you give, then that's basically a semantic noise. So those are the three kinds of noise, semantic, internal, and external noise. So there you have it. If you could add a barrier to communication based on your experience, I would be very happy to read all those in the comment section. Goodbye. See you next time.